everyone, today I'm reading, I'm still reading Matilda by Roald Dahl and we're going to be reading Bruce Barkertrotter and the Cake today on page 111. Um, yeah, so I've been reading this for about, I don't know, three days, three or four days um, and I just wanted to ask if you guys enjoyed it or not because um, also, if you've already read Matilda or if you don't really enjoy reading it, um, put in the comments down below if you have any tips or whatever, but what other books I could read or tips how I can, you know, yeah, <laughs> just tips of what I could, what books I could read later on and things like that. And I have actually been reading Letters from the White House by Emma Cowell and maybe we'll do that book next. So, yeah, anyways, so this book is, so we're going to start chat. Uh, no chapter what? Uh, just a chapter. It's called Bruce Bogdot and the Cake on the page 111. And um, yeah, let's start. How could she get away with it? Lavender said to Matilda. Surely the children go home and tell their mothers and fathers. I know my father would raise a terrific stink if I told him the headmistress had grabbed me by the hair and slung me over the playground fence. No, he wouldn't. Matilda said, and I'll tell you why. He simply wouldn't believe you. Of course he would. He wouldn't, Matilda said, and the reason is obvious. Your story would sound too ridiculous to be believed, and that is the Trunchbull's great secret. So what does so that says, and that is the Trunchbull's great secret. So what is the Trunchbull's great secret? Put in the comments down below what the Trunchbull's great secret is. What the Trunchbull's great secret is. What is... What is... Lavender asked. Matilda said, Never do anything by halves if you want to get away with it. Be outrageous. Go the whole hog. Make sure everything you do is so completely crazy. It's unbelievable. No parent is going to believe this pigtail story not in a million years. Mine wouldn't. They call me a liar. So that's what... So Matilda's saying that uh, the Trunchables... Um, trick is to get things so unbelievably outrageous so that if any kids go tell the parents for example they go say I got thrown out the window this morning what would the parents say what would your parents think if you were if you were a child's parent and your child came up to you and said my headmistress threw me out the window today um, would you believe her I wouldn't because obviously I would have thought that if you got thrown out the window, you would not be standing there next to me telling me that that happened. So I would not believe it. But, who knows? I don't think they actually know that the judge board is that much. But even if they believed it, it would be no use because they would have nothing to, like, go against the judge board. Because it's not judge board, like, it's not normal headmistress. Not like your normal, great, lovely headmistress. In that case, Lavender said, Amanda's mother isn't going to cut her pigtails off. No, she isn't, Matilda said. Amanda will do it herself. You see if she doesn't. Do you think she's mad? So, who do you think she is? She's you. Well, Dar's used she twice. How can she get away with it? Do you think she's mad? Who do you think the she is? Who? The Trunchable. The Trunchable is the she. The she. No, I don't think she is mad, Matilda said. But she's very dangerous. Being in this school is like being in a cage with a cobra. You have to be very fast on your feet. And they got another example of how dangerous the headmistress would be on the very next day. During lunch, an announcement was made that the whole school should go into the assembly hall and be seated as soon as the meal was over. When all the 250 or so boys and girls were settled down in the assembly, the trunchbull marched onto the platform. None of the other teachers came in with her. She was carrying a riding crop in her right hand. She stood up there on the centre stage in her green breeches with legs apart and riding crop in one hand. Now, what's a riding crop? Do any of you guys know what a riding crop is? So I'm going to search that word up later and... Yeah, and I said yesterday I would try to find a uh, chapter so you guys could get the words down too. I've not been able to find anything, which is really annoying. So I'll try to find something tomorrow. Or if you guys want to actually really want to find the word or something, you can go search them up. 
and your own one on your own tail. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna carry on with it. Okay, she stood up there on the centre stage in her green breeches with legs apart and riding crop in one hand, glaring at the sea of the upturned faces before her. What's going to happen? Lavender whispered. I don't know, Matilda whispered back. The whole school waited what was coming next. Bruce Bogtrotter! The principal barked suddenly. Where is Bruce Bogtrotter? A hand shot up among the seated children. Come up here! The boy shouted and looked snapped about it. An eleven-year-old boy who was decidedly large and round stood up and waddled briskly forwards. He climbed up onto the platform. Stand over there, the principal ordered, pointing. The, po pointing. the boy stood to one side. He looked nervous. He knew very well he wasn't up there to be presented with a prize. He was watching her mistress with an exceedingly wary eye, spelled W-A-R-Y. A wary eye. And kept edging further and further away from her with little shuffles of his feet. Rather than, rather as a mouse rat might edge away from a terrier that is watching it from across the room. His plump, flabby face had turned grey. In apprehension, his stockings hung about his ankles. This clot! Boom, the headmistress pointing the riding crop at him like a rapier. Sorry, guys, I'm really... You know what, I'm going to read this whole bit out because this is a very, like, very powerful speech of a headmistress. And then I'll write my words down. This clot, boom, the headmistress, pointing the violin crop at like a rapier. This blackhead, this foul carbuncle, this poisonous pistol that you see before you is none other than a disgusting criminal. A den denizen of the underworld, the member of the mafia. You see, she's being very rude here. I don't really like how she, like, is pointing the riding crop at him and then saying all these really bad words at him. Full carbuncle. I had the word carbuncle for some reason. His, this blackhead. This poison apostle. Disgusting criminal. Denizen of the underworld. Member of the mafia. <sighs> I do not like the sound of how she, she's like describing him. And of course, you know, he is, she's not describing him very well. Yeah, because he does not, he's not like that. Do any of you know what Mafia is? Yeah, I don't know what a Mafia is. Mafia. I'm going to search around that later. <laughs> Who, me? Bruce Bonkrotter said, nothing genuinely puzzled. A thief, the trench ball screamed. A crook, a pirate, a brigand, a rustler. Oh my goodness, the trench ball is not acting very nice here. Stay on, the boy said. I mean, dash it all, headmistress. Do you deny it, you miserable little gun boy -o? Gumboil. <laughs> I love my headmistress voice. Gumboil. <laughs> okay, where is it? Mm, you, do you deny it, you miserable little gumboil? Do you plead not guilty? I don't know what you're talking about, the boy said, more puzzled than ever. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You separating little blister. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh. pen properly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. I just have to write these words down. They're really annoying. You separating little blister, Trinchable shouted. Yesterday morning, during break, you sneaked like a serpent into the kitchen and saw a slice of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. That tray had just been prepared for me personally by the cook. It was my own morning snack, and as for the cake, it was my own private stock. That was not a boy cake. You don't think for one minute I'm going to eat the filth I gave you? That cake was made from real butter and cream, and he... 
the rat rubber bandit. The rubber bandit. Sorry, guys. That's safe, Cracker. That's highway, man. Stan. Oh my god, this is so annoying. I have to write all these words down because I have to keep pausing. Ah, oh, highway man standing over there with his socks on his ankles, stole it and ate it all. I never did, the boy exclaimed, turning from grey to white. Don't lie to me, bog trotter, barked the trinchable. The cook saw you, and what's more, he saw you eating it. The trinchable paused to wipe a fleck of froth from her lips. Oh my, but you see how evil the trinchable is. She's all day every day go like you can't do that you can't do this why you do that why you do this eh mm. not the best teacher i would not want to hit this just like that no when she spoke again her voice was suddenly softer quieter more friendly and she leaned towards the boy smiling you like my special chocolate cake don't you bog trotter it's rich and delicious isn't it bog trotter very good the boy mumbled the words were all right were out before he could stop himself. You're right, Trinchable said. It is very good. Therefore, I think you should congratulate the cook. When a gentleman has a particularly good meal, Bog Trotter, he always sends his compliments to the chef. You didn't know that, did you, Bog Trotter? But those who inhabit the criminal underworld are not noted for their good manners. Oh my goodness. This is horrible. Trinchable sink. She, he is a criminal underworld. I don't get that. I don't like that. I do not like that. You've barely read as you can. I've got words only like that. Okay. Anyways, I'm so sorry, guys. Underworld. Where is it? Oh, I'm not noted for their good manners. The boy remained silent. Cook! The Trinchable shouted, turning her head towards the door. Come here, cook! Dog Trotter wishes to tell you how good your chocolate cake is. Cook, a tall, shriveled female who looked as though all of her body juices had been dried out of her long ago in a hot oven, walked onto the platform long ago. Uh, walked onto the platform wearing a dirty white apron. Her entrance had clearly been arranged beforehand by the head mistress. Now then, Dog Trotter, the trinchable boomed. Tell the cook what you think of her chocolate cake. Very good, the boy mumbled. He could see, you could see he was now beginning to wonder what all this was leading up to. The only thing he knew for certain was that the law forbade Trinchable to hit him with the riding crop. And she kept smacking it against her thigh. Oh my lordy boardy. That was some comfort, but not much because the Trinchable was totally unpredictable. One never knew what she was going to do next. There you are, cook, the trinchable cried. Bog Trotter likes your cake. He adores your cake. He, do you have any more of the cake you could give him? I do indeed, the cook said. She seemed to have learnt her lines by heart. Oh my god, wretched woman. Okay, now. Did you all get it and bring a knife to cut it with? The cook disappeared. Almost at once she was back again, staggering another weight. Of the enormous, of the enormous round chocolate cake on a china platter. The cake was fully eighteen inches in the diameter, and it was covered with dark brown chocolate icing. Put it on the table, the principal said, and there was a small table centre stage and a chair behind it. The cook placed the, placed the cake carefully on the table. Sit down, Bog Trotter, the trinchable said. Sit there. The boy moved cautiously to the table and sat down. He stared at the gigantic cake. There you are, Bog Trotter, the trinchable said. And once again, her voice became very soft, persuasive and even gentle. It's all for you, every bit of it. And I do enjoy that slice of yesterday so very much. I ordered the cook to make you an extra large one, all for yourself. Oh, thank you, the boy said, totally bemused. Bemused. Thank, thank the cook, not me, the trinchable said. Thank you, cook, the boy said. The cook stood there like a shriveled boot lace. Tight 
lipped in voiceable disappointment. She looks as though her mouth is full of lemon juice. Come on then, the trench bull said. Why don't you cut yourself a nice thick slice and try it? What now? The boy said cautious. He knew there was a catch in there somewhere, but he wasn't sure where. Can't I take it home instead? He asked. That would be impolite, the trench bull said with a crafty grin. Do you miss Joe Cookie here? How grateful you are for all the trouble she's taken. Cookie! I like that name. Cookie! Is it cookie? Do you like a cookie? Do you want a cookie for your dinner? I like that cookie. The boy didn't move. Go on, get on with it. The trench boy said, get us get us slice and taste it. You haven't got all day. The boy picked up the knife and was about to cut the cake and then he stopped. He stared at the cake. Then he looked up at the trench ball. Then at all the stringy... Then at the stringy cook with her lemon juice mouth. The stringy cook with her lemon juice mouth. All the children in the hall were watching intensely, waiting for something to happen. They felt certain it must. The trench ball was the person who would give someone a whole chocolate cake to eat just out of kindness. Many were getting a tip and filled with pepper or castor oil or some other full tasting substance which, which would make the boy violently sick. It might even be arsenic. And he would be dead in 10 seconds flat. I do not want to be dead in 10 seconds flat. I don't want to be dead in 10 seconds flat. Or perhaps it was booby trap cake and the whole thing would just blow up the moment it was cook, cut, taking the responsibility with it. I've got a way of you can do that. You get a balloon. So you don't, it's not even going to be a cake. You just get a balloon. So, and then you're going to cover it with cream. And make it look like it's just like a normal cake. Then spread the cream all on it. And when, when someone gets a nice to cut it, it goes boom! All the cream and everything just... Just be whipped cream, actually. Just put whipped cream there. No one in the school put the pass, put it past the trench board to do any of these things. I don't want to eat it, the boy said. Tasty, you little brat, the trench board said. You're insulting the cook. Very gingerly, the boy began to cut a slice of the vast cake. Then he levered the slice out. Then he put down the knife and took the sticky thing in his fingers and started very slowly to eat it. It's good, isn't it? Trunchbull asked. Very good, the boy said, chewing and swallowing. He finished the slice. Have another, the Trunchbull said. That's enough, thank you, the boy murmured. I said, have another, Trunchbull said. And now there was altogether a sharp edge to her voice. Eat another slice and do as you are told. I don't want another slice, the boy said. Suddenly, the trench exploded. Eat! She shouted, banging her thigh with a vibrating club. And if I tell you to eat, if I tell you to eat, you will eat. I, you wanted the cake, you stole the cake, and now you've got the cake. What more, you're going to eat it. You don't leave the platform at all, and nobody leaves this hall until you have eaten the entire cake that's sitting there and you. Do I make myself clear, Bullshot, or do you get my meaning? Ah, oh, poor Bog Trotter, poor Bruce, Bog Trotter. Oh, the boy looked at the trench pole. Then he looked down at an enormous cake. Eat, eat, eat! The trench pole was yelling. Then slowly, the boy cut himself another slice and began to eat it. But Dodo was fascinated. Do you think he can do it? She whispered to Lavender. No, Lavender whispered that. It's impossible. He'd be sick before he's halfway through. The boy kept going. When he had finished the second slice, he looked at the trench ball, hesitating. Eight! She shouted. Greedy, these who like to eat cake must have cake. Eat faster, boy. Eat faster. We don't want to be here all day. And don't stop like you're doing now. Next time you stop, before it's all finished, you go straight to the choke, you know, he'll lock the door and throw the key down the well. The boy cut the third slice and started to eat. He finished this one quicker than the other two. And when... And when that was done, he immediately picked up the knife and cut the next slice. In some peculiar way, he seemed to be getting into a stride. Matilda watched closely, saw no signs of distress in the boy yet. If anything, he seemed to be gathering confidence as he went along. He's doing well, she whispered to Lavender. He'll be sick soon, Lavender whispered back. It's going to be horrid. When Bruce Bell shut it, he's in his way through half of the entire enormous cake. He had paused for just a couple of seconds and took a deep breath and took several deep breaths and the trench ball stood with hands on hips glaring at him get on with it she shouted ease it up suddenly the boy let out a gigantic belt which rolled around the assembly room like thunder many of the audience began to giggle silence 
chatted the ginger ball. The boy cut himself another thick slice and stare, started eating it up fast. There were still no signs of flagging or giving up. Wow, he can eat. He can eat so much. It's not he can eat, he is eating so much. Oh my goodness. Good eater, that's what you call it. That's what you call a good eater. Real good eater. Okay, I'm going to write in my work and post it notes now because. Yeah, because I don't want to go to the next page. So, we've got flagging. did not look as though he was about to stop and cry out. I can't, I can't, I can't eat any more. I'm going to be sick. He was still in the running. And now a subtle change is coming over the... That's me, Pam. Oh, my boy, sit down. Between the, hun the 250 watching children in the audience. Early on, they had sensed impending disaster. Oh no, disaster, disaster! Oh no! They had to prepare, prepare themselves for an unpleasant scene which the wretched boy stuffed to the gills with chocolate cake. I really would not want to be Bruce Bogtrotter because you would be stuffed to the gills with chocolate cake. Like, oh, I don't want to be Bruce Bogtrotter. Stuffed to the gills of chocolate cake, and would have to surrender and beg for mercy. Then he would have to. He would. Ha, we would. Ha, they would have watched the triumphant trouble forcing more and still more of cake into the mouth of the gasping boy. Not a bit of it. Bruce Bogtrotter was was three quarters of of the way through and was still going strong. One sense that he was almost beginning to enjoy himself. He had a mountain to climb, and he was jolly well going to reach the top or die in the attempt. It is more, he had now become very conscious of the audience, who was silently rooting for him. Okay, so well done, Bob Trotter. He's eating a lot of cake today. I don't think his parents would be very happy. This is nothing less than a battle between him and the mighty trench ball. Some did, some way, someone shouted. Come on, Brucey, you can make it! Trunchbull wheeled round and yelled, Silence! The audience watched ten intently. Ugh! Ugh! I'd be so sick after eating so much cake. Something. The audience watched intently. They were thoroughly watched, caught up to the contest. They were longing to start cheering, but they didn't dare. I think he's going to make it, Matilda whispered. I think so too, Lavenda whispered back. I wouldn't have believed anyone in the world could eat the whole cake that size. Trunchbull doesn't believe it either, Matilda whispered. Look at her, she's turning redder and redder, and she's going to kill him if he wins. The boy was slowing down now. There was no doubt about that. But he kept pushing the stuff in his mouth and he, with, with the dogged perseverance. Dogged perseverance of a long and distant runner who, was, has, who has sighted, sighted the finish line and knows he must keep going. At, as the la very last mouthful disappeared, a tremendous cheer rose up from the audience and the children were leaping onto their chairs, yelling and clapping and shouting, Well done, Brucey! Good for you, Brucey! You've won a gold medal, Brucey! Wow, well, well done, Bruce! Well done! Trunchbull stood motionless on the platform. Her great horsey head. Wow, horsey head. Horsey head, wow. Her great horsey head had turned the colour of molten lava and her eyes were glittering with fury. She glared at Bruce Bogtrotter who was sitting on his chair like some huge overstuffed grub replete replete 
Compatos, 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 Comatos or Compatos, uh, Comatos, this is a bit weird, spelled C-O-M-A-T-O-S-E, Comatos, unable to move or speak, a fine sweat was beading his forehead. But there was a grin of triumph on his face. Yay! A beard triumph on his face. A grin of triumph on his face. Suddenly he tripped to lunge forward and grabbed a large empty tiny platter on which the cake had rested. He raised the tie in the air and brought it down with a crash straight on top of the wretched bruised box on his head. And, it, and Peter flew all over the platform. The boy was by now so full of cake, he was like a sack full of wet cement that you couldn't have hurt him with a sledgehammer. He simply shook his head a few times and went home grinning. Go to blazes, screamed Trench Boy, and she marched off the platform, followed by the cook. Okay, so, this chapter has been amazing. It's been saying of, like, of how, I don't know, how... The Trunchable is being really mean, trying to make yourself look really strong. But then Bruce Bonk is probably one of the only children that has beat her up. Make her also feel defeated. That is what she gets. Honestly. It's what she deserves. She deserves to be beaten up. Let's see the mini egg. Anyways, so yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. Okay. So, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell down below, and get to give me a big thumbs up. And comment down below if, um, if you remember what the Trinchable's Great Secret is. And I'll try to find a chapter. I can't. If you really want to search up some words or something, put them comments down below. You can always go and find the chapter. So, anyways, bye, guys!